All right, we want to show you guys how to make this little fun little owl. And it can be um, a Christmas ornament, really. It's just a cute little thing. Or it could be a company something, or it could be for Halloween. But it's really fun, and we're using the, um, the supplies for in our Fiber Fairy giveaway this Halloween. Um, October 30th actually is the Friday. So I have off-white core. I have um, white and chestnut top coat. It could just be any white or brown. This is a dark natural top coat and dark curls and a little bit of gold for the eye which you'll um, have to provide. But um, it's so simple. It's one, actually one shape on the Zoli tool. And I'll show you how to do it. We're going to use two or three um, 12 inch strips of core. Just get some ready. And then what I want to do is wrap the tool from about the three inch mark, one, two, three, to the tip. And it'll get a little bit, it'll get a little bit longer than that, but. And make sure you hit those facets of the tip of that edge. And then ultimately, I want to build a teardrop by building this, um, this end larger. So I'll just thin it out and go back down to that tip again and then back up. And this last piece, I'll probably just concentrate mostly around the top. So this could be a base for this owl or really any little, any simple little bird that you wanna do. Okay, so you can kinda of see that teardrop shape. Now while it's on the tool, I'm gonna to felt it a bit because I really don't want it to lose its shape um, before before I slide it off. It's good to come down on this. This is going to be the top of the owl's head um, face and then this point gets swooped back to be the tail. put one more piece on there. Just feel like it needs a little bit more substance. There we go. Okay, you slide it off. And then you want to encourage this little tip back like that. So it's good to felt it since it doesn't have an armature. Felt it pretty well. Okay, now the first step to starting uh, to make it look like an owl is to fold some white over the belly. So I'm gonna take a little Whoa. set, what? There's a lot, well Thanks. there's camera moving. <laughs> we have our camera against the table, so it's shaking with the felting. Oh, so I'm here. trying to move here, it. Everyone move. brace yourselves. Okay, is that better? Yes, and now I need to... So now it doesn't wiggle. I, I think we're good. Sorry. Sorry. It's a little earthquakey. I made a few people motion sick. <laughs> so I want to start by aligning some of the tips of my piece of top coat with the tail underneath the tail. This is the technique we used on the chicks. You just felt about a third, the center third, 
um, or the first two thirds and then fold this part over. And then we'll put another one and build our way up. And so if you just felt the center third, then you can leave those tips fringy and not felt them all down. Just depends on what you like. And then fold this over. It's nice if you were blending colors, it's a really nice way to do it because all the fringy ends blend into each other. And then we'll do one more. We want to come right up. I'd say the, uh, you want to leave about an inch for the, for the head. It's a nice thick one. Like that. And you can just leave that fold because that'll be his little chest. We'll do the same thing on the back with chestnut. And you, I mean, you could mix any color that you might have. This is just what um, what we have in the giveaway today. Actually, I think what I did on this guy beforehand was I just took a piece of chestnut and wrapped it right around the head just to get some color going on there. the top that's going to get covered by other things. All right, now I'll need one more piece here. I'm not trying to be too elaborate today. usually like to try to cover the fold, so I'll put one more piece over the fold. Just a little thin piece like that. So that right. last piece you do not fold over. Right, because I'm trying the to, seam. on here it's okay to have the fold because it's, it's the poof, you know, the poof of the chest and where the chest meets the face, but here we want it to blend in a little bit. He's right looking right. a little middle-aged right now on yeah. the top. He's got that <laughs> little bald funny. spot. Oh, so there's any, you can do this in any order really. I think, um, I think we'll work on the face and then do the wings. Creaky. I like wonder it's, it's spooky. Here. Okay, we're gonna make a tiny little nose and I'm gonna use this natural black. And I've just got a little wisp that I'm gonna wrap around the toothpick and I'm aiming for sharp. I really wanna use the tip of the toothpick even. Try to get it as sharp as possible. I'm gonna use a little bit of you smooth. Um, to really help things stick. Don't let it get too long because, oh, I got too much fiber and it's too long to pull off. Because you don't want it to be, um, shoot. It's all right, I got it, 
It'll be alright. There we go. You don't want it to be um, a great big long thing. You're trying to get more of a little pointy little um, seed kind of thing. Definitely felt this because even it's even though it's so tiny, it's got to stand alone. So it really needs to. Um, I was just trying to switch to a um, finer needle so I can really stab it a lot. Can you see? I am super, super zoomed. zoomed. Yep. Getting all my stab it pollution. No, it looks good. All right. Okay, so once you're sure that that's going to stay, then you slide it off and you really stab the wider end in pretty well. I'm using a stronger needle because I really want to get that to go in there right in the center of the face. And then with the fine, oh, that's a good shape already. With the fine needle, you can kind of shape that um, that little bend over. But mine kind of just ended up that way. Okay, awesome. Now we just make two black circles for the eyes. I like to use black core. It's uh, it's all fuzzy and, and short, so it's easier to get into small shapes than like a top coat. So I just take a piece and fold it around and start to get it a little bit circular. And I think it's cute when they're nice and big, kind of like crazy big. So many different ways you can make owls, so... You can really have fun with this shape and just do all different kinds of stuff, really. Barn owls and snow owls and silhouette owls are one of my favorite. Well, in different colors could make any yeah. kind of bird. Yep. All right, now to make them look owly, we're gonna make these little, these little poofs. So I'm going to use some white and it's kind of long. So I'm going to, for this tiny of a project. So I'm actually going to cut it in half and fold it right over itself. That felt down the center. Use a little strip of core. Felt that down the center and then fold one side over the other so that you're making basically making a very little taco. But you need it to be, this is almost two inches long now because it wants to wrap around the whole eye like that. So let me do another one and you can see. So I've got my little poof of top, cut it in half, Put the two halves together probably wouldn't be bad to put cut sides opposite felt down the center put core down the center and then fold one side over the other to make a taco we had tacos last night they're good with rice, rice, guacamole, salsa. People might be thinking, I bet it's getting close to lunchtime there. <laughs> so hungry. I'm always hungry though. Then you just felt this little poof around the little eyeball. Using a strong needle right I now? I am using a strong needle. I really want to just get that to stick. 
one eye poof. This one might be a tiny bit long. I'll pull a little bit off. You can leave them with just eye poofs without the. Um, you can get different colors in there. You can be so fancy. So, on this guy, I made this little a triangle to make these. So I'll show you how to do that, but you, you could just leave them with this, this kind of look. Yeah. Okay, so to make the head triangle, <laughs> I just took the chestnut, get a nice even sort of two inch square piece, and draw a triangle in it. Fold your sides in. Just give it a little bit of felting. And then you can kind of scoop a little bit of the center out, just take some of that, and then encourage these into what will be the little tufts. And so you just take the center and you can put it on top of the white kind of bring it down to the beak use a strong needle definitely to get it to start to stick I'm going to keep it off the eyes a little bit and then up here you're just going to felt that down and let the two let those two sides stick up. Now, this gets the fun part because we have these beautiful fun curls and it's really fun to make these um, as the um, as this part that sticks up here. So on this one I folded them in half but I think I'm actually going to cut the curls to the right length because it was a little bit much on such a small project to get it um, folded in half and not be bulky. So when I do cut it though, I want to try to kind of fringe the edge out rather than super blunt because basically I'm trying to felt that right in here. Again, a uh, stronger needle. I guess you could do that first and then your triangle could help kind of cover this tip. But it's fun, just that natural curl gives it a little texture. I hate cutting locks. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather not. But if it's just the right thing, then it has to be. Just kind of trying to tuck that into that. There we go. It's funny. It's cute. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna do some little wings and then I'll um, show you how to do the eyes. So the wings are, um, also just triangles, but um, you can layer a couple different colors. I also put curls into the wings. So if I do chestnut and then just a little bit of a dark tip, I'll show you how one looks without, you gotta flip it over so that your blended color is on the other side. Draw a triangle. But this time, I'm actually, I usually use the end of the triangle to blend, but I kind of want his wings to look, um, 
to be defined, even at the top. So I'm actually going to felt towards the top a little bit. So you just make a little kind of also kind of a teardrop shape. And then that'll go right there. But if you want to add a curl, you find a good one. This gray is pretty. Let me see if I can split it between the two wings. Okay. And I am going to fold this because it's okay if it has a little bit of bulk. So I'm putting the cut end down, felting that on. And I want to make sure that the pretty end actually overlaps the cut end so that you don't really see the cut end. And now we have this fold here. So to help that blend a little bit, I'm just going to take a little bit of chestnut and lay it over. And then top of the wing goes right about where the bottom of the head is. I'm using that, I'm still defining the shape of the wing, but I used that little bit of chestnut that I put on to blend up onto the head so you didn't have such a needled edge. All right, one wing. This one's tiny bit wimpy, I'm going to put a little bit more fiber. Can I have a wimpy wing? It no, would be I'm flying, flying in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be a hoot? <laughs> oh boy. Belting is fun. Working with Milo is fun. Oh, yes. Some people's dream come true. That's right. Oh my gosh, these locks are so pretty. We get excited about locks around here. These locks are too nice. We're not giving them away. You already said you were. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm putting my cut ends down, felting that on. and then letting the pretty ends pass those. And then using a little bit of chestnut to blend and help hold those locks on. I love using locks to represent feathers or I feel like this stab it's extra sticky today. It's because I don't usually felt into it so much. This is like a 30 minute project. We're almost done. It is. Yeah. You could make like a gazillion of these and give them to your friends. hand them out to the world. Really do want to hand out felting to random strangers. One day we will. Okay. Almost done. Little eyes. I, I've been into, uh, rather than trying to draw the iris, um, I take the fiber Fold it into a little circle. Stab it on. I'm going to use a fine needle now. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
that's my problem. It takes too long. No, I will. I will. Once I get it, I need to get it all stuck. All right, so if you just stab in a circle and you make sure that you, every stab stays in that circle, then the wool will go into the circle. Promise. Another one. So that needle's a 38? I don't know what that needle is. That's a 40 twist. This one, that one's too strong. That is a 38, yes. I think that other one was bent, and so it was, the other 38 was bent. I'm trying to get this little bit of gray out of here, sorry. See, now I might use the strong one to try and get rid of something by stabbing it in. Okay, then we need to put the black back, man, into the center. And so we just roll a little dot, stab her in. I think the littler you make them, the more surprised they look. not particularly surprised. He's a little surprised. He's like, oh, there's a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Am I on film? <laughs> oh no, I need more gold. I didn't make a circle, I need a lima bean. More gold. Helps if you do it right the first time. There we go. Don't get started. Just somebody leaving. There. Who's the cutest little owl? Anyway, tons you can do with different colors and, but it's a fun little, needs a little nest. 